Hi guys, welcome back. If you guys have been following the bicycle frame build video series, you might know that I'm working on the head tube badge, and uh, it's not really a badge. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like a badge. Anyway, uh, I really wanted to finish it this weekend, but I ran into a bit of a snag. I was using a end mill to carve out like carve out a shape, and uh, it's a tiny little end mill. It's a one sixteenth inch end mill and I was moving too fast and I snapped it. And uh, it's the only one I had so I had to order more and um, I couldn't do any more work. So uh, I set that aside and I figured why not um, do some welding practice because uh, it's been a while and I wanted to uh, show you guys my favorite pulse settings. Some of you have seen these settings in an earlier video of mine. So uh, here we go. In this video I'll show you guys those settings and uh, we'll join up some practice tubing. Here I am using the hole saw to make a miter cut. It's in my mill actually and uh, I don't usually use the mill but I started using it because it's a lot more convenient. As long as you are using a arbor on your hole saw uh, and snug it right up in there, it is solid. It's much better than the lathe. And uh, you can also see I'm using Joe's angle blocks which are super convenient as well. This is an aluminum heat sink I made a while back uh, just for practice wells. This isn't necessary but I found that the closer I can replicate the experience of welding bicycle tubing uh, the more worthwhile the practice will be uh, because you know the metal will react in the same way it'll cool down uh, the same and heat up uh, very similarly. Here are the tubes tacked and set up in the fixture. And my favorite pulse settings are 120 amps, 1.5 pulses per second, 5% background current, 25% time on. I ripped these settings off uh, from the mountain bike forums, a mountain bike forums post by Peter Olaf Bungham. I'll have a link in the description to this uh, to the thread where he posts these settings and he has some really sweet pics of uh, some seat state wells that he had done. Something to note, at least on my machine, when you get down into the lower pulses per second, I found that the control knob can be uh, really sensitive. A little turn like this can be the difference from this and this. I like to have my pulse somewhere between these two frequencies. Okay, here we are set up and ready to go. I'm starting off by laying a weld across the top. We'll jump up there. Flipped it and we'll lay a weld across the other side. You see, I got a little off the uh, track there at the end. Okay, now we'll lay welds into the corners. It can be uh, really tricky keeping the the rod in the uh, in the gap there. Sometimes I I wander outside as you're coming around. And, uh, sorry, you can't see this one very well with the uh, cup covering it up. All right, now I'm I'm on the other side and pretty much doing the same welds. Oh, little, little balling there. You got kind of a hot start too. You can see the gold area there. All right, now I'm gonna finish this off. Bring it into the corner.
Okay. So uh, now I'm doing the other side and I am using my, uh, I'm doing this left-handed. And uh, that's because I haven't done this in a while and I thought it'd be good practice. And it, it was pretty much a disaster. You can see I, I balled it up and managed to get no filler into the gap. So here I am, I'm gonna start that off again, right in the same place. And the reason this happened is, you can see I've got way too much torch angle. Um, I'm just not, I haven't used uh, my left hand for practice in a while. So, um, yeah, I need a lot of practice. <laughs> I mean, it's not necessary to weld left-handed, but it comes in really handy when you get get in a tight spot or if you want to um, uh, join the two welds together in the corner like I am here. I was also really nervous for some reason. Uh, I think just because I haven't done it so long and I was recording this just specifically for these welds. So I think I was getting a little nervous shooting it. All right, now I'm closing that tiny little gap and <laughs> uh, try it again because you saw that balled up just then. And uh, yeah, balled up again. And here I am trying it again. Of course, I let it cool down a little between these passes. Of course, this you can't even see it because I had moved the uh, um, I'd moved the tubes around. Here's the results. All right, that's all I got. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll get the final uh, bicycle frame build video wrapped up and out to you guys. It's kind of a special one because it's the last video in the series. I'll do my best to make it worth the wait, but uh, don't get too excited. I don't want to, I don't want to build it up too much. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.